Okay, before we proceed and add any new functionality, we just have to tighten up the control. And that's often the case in game development. You come up with a proof of concept, you get the basic control in place, and then you start to have to look for the way people could exploit it. So right now, there's an unintentional rapid fire. So what I've done is I've attached the uh, Sparkle Sprite to one of the success boxes. That way you can see what's actually happening. So let's give this a run. If you press it just once, it goes out and comes back. That's what it's supposed to do, out and then back. But watch what happens if you rapidly hit that. See, it's already too far forward, and now it's in front of the fail, and that means they will always succeed. So it's that easy to break it. So what we have to do is we have to put in a, a variable that says, okay, if it's already moving, then don't accept any more key input until it's no longer moving. So in the string script, string one script to be precise, so public string lock input. In other words, this is going to be used, as the name suggests, to lock out any additional input. So by default, it should be no because nothing is in motion. This is where we check to see if a key is being pressed down. What we're going to say is, okay, in addition to the key being pressed down, let's make sure that lock, that new variable lock input is also set to now. And therefore, once the command runs, we want lock input to be set to yes. Because now, by if this is true, then it moves the object. Well, that means we want to lock out any input because it's moving. And then, once the object has returned back to its original position, we want lock input to go back to no. And that easy to clear up that particular issue. We're actually probably going to rewrite this. I might change it so that rather than traveling back to the original position, it just appears back in the original position. So now let's rapidly hit that. And it's going back to where it should. You probably can hear the key in the background through the microphone. But as you can see, it's no longer accepting our, our, our multiple inputs. It only accepts the one, and then it goes back. So just like that, we fixed that issue. Okay, brief splice in between there. I did some testing, and I'm going to do this a little bit differently than what I normally do. Normally, I write the code as I explain it, but this process is a little bit convoluted. So to write it as I explain it doesn't make a lot of sense. Instead, uh, I've written out the code, but I'll explain it line by line. So, here's what we got. And as a quick recap, this is just getting to have two different type of keystrokes. Before you would hit the button, uh, the collider would go out and automatically come back. Now, you need to be able to hit the button, have the, the collider go out. If you're still holding button, have it stay there, but if you don't let go of the button after one second, it automatically goes back. Now, what was causing a problem is it would automatically go back, I'd let go of the button, and then something else would happen. So what I wound up doing is I added this variable, so public string released key. Based on the name, you can tell it's tracking to see if a key has been released. So let's see what we got. When you press the key down, and we did this in, uh, earlier in this video, as long as the key hasn't already been pressed, uh, because we did this to prevent rapid fire, then this will all perform. What we added to it was this, this new variable, released key. So it's saying that, no, you have not released the key yet. So here's the get key up. Release key is set to yes. So what was causing me problems, I was trying to do the activity in here, and I realized that I couldn't. I really needed everything to happen in the IE numerator um, uh, section, the subroutines. 
So uh, import dot get key up, activate string. You're just looking to see if this key has been let go. If so, set this variable to yes. So let's go to retract collider. So yield return new, wait four seconds, three quarters of a second. Get component rigid body velocity, zero, zero, zero. So you're saying you've pressed the key, okay? It's moving at a velocity of two along the Z axis. Wait for three quarters of a second then stop it from moving. Now, what you have to do is you have to check to see if the key has been released. If you do, then you want the um, uh, collider to immediately come back. If it hasn't been released, you want it to stay out there for one second. So if key is released, and as we said, this is where it gets set to yes if you let go of it. So you have not let go of it because it's set to no. So if it's set to no, go ahead and wait that one second. So you have not let go of the key. Therefore, you want the key to stay out. You want the collider to stay out there for one second. And then go ahead and do this new coroutine. This coroutine here basically just reverses what was done before. So it's the negative two. So it brings it back off the screen. Do that for three quarters of a second and then come to a rest again. So that's what happens if the key has not been released. If the key has been released, then immediately bring it back. So that's the difference. If you haven't released the key, wait for a second and then release it, uh, do the release note. But if you have released the key, don't wait the second, just automatically do the same functionality. And that should about do it. Like I said, it was, uh, trying to explain it while I was writing was getting kind of convoluted, not to mention I was changing what I was tracking. And the big realization I had to come across, like I said, is I was trying to do some of the functionality here, or I was having it go right from here to this one. And I, I realized I didn't want to do that. I realized I need everything to flow through this. So uh, I'm going to make this script available on Dropbox. You do not need a membership to Dropbox. Uh, I'm just going to put the link right in the description and when you go to it, it will be a shared folder. You can just like right click and choose uh, download. So if there's any questions, just let me know. I apologize. I normally don't do it this way, but like I said, it was kind of messy getting through the logic and writing it out because I wound up writing something and then unwriting it, basically breaking it. So I think this is pretty clear as it is uh, as far as being concise, but kind of going from point A to point D, it is a bit uh, jarring. Uh, so that should do it. Oh, actually, let's run it. Sorry. So I'm going to press you, you, the uh, collider is going to come out. So I'm going to press number one, goes out. It automatically comes back because I didn't hold it. OK, now I'm going to press and hold. It stays out there and it automatically comes back on its own. I let go of it and it doesn't break anything. I can see the little glow right there. So again, I tap it. It goes out immediately comes back once it reaches the uh, the end. I'm going to hold it again. It goes out, comes back on its own. I'm going to rapid fire. All right, looks like the rapid fire did still break out there, actually. Let's take a quick look to see why that happened. Lock input. Let's take it out of here and we should not allow it. I believe I had one here that I got rid of. That should do it. Is it should not allow for a, another keystroke until it's come back. So let's quickly try that. Yep, that fixed it. Okay, now we'll hold it. Stays out there, comes back. Tap it, goes out there, comes back. Tap, 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 hold, hold, and there we go. All right, so that should do it. Uh, we fixed the issue where you could rapid fire, and we now have two types of holds, uh, two types of notes. One where you tap, and when you hold and stay out there. The next video is when we'll then look at uh, creating the new type of note that needs to be held for a, a longer period of time now that we have that new way of holding the note. So that will be in here. We're basically going to create the new note, uh, have it instantiate sometimes, and then determine how uh, we're going to go about um, 
detecting it because right now the collision is just yes or no. As soon as it collides, it destroys. We're going to have to modify this so that it's not just the collision. Uh, maybe we're actually going to check how long it's colliding. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.